I'm Bill Dudes. This is another in the series of Out With Your Camera, where we're going to, you're going to follow me around, we're just going to take pictures, although this is kind of an, a second introductory episode to that series, because what I want to talk about is what's the subject in, your, in the frame that you're trying to take a picture of. So when you put your camera view, viewfinder up to your eye, do you know what you're taking a picture of? Do you know what your subject is? Well, you say, sure, of course I do. Why would I be putting it up to my eye if I didn't know that? But oftentimes we don't. Now, sometimes it's just a documentary picture. We're on a trip and we want to make sure we get the, the, the iconic picture of Paris or the Eiffel Tower or whatever, wherever city we're in. And, and there are some shots you want to get, even though there are postcards of them, even though a lot of people have taken these. So those, those are a giveaway in a sense. You can have those. And the subject really is the scene. And, and, and kind of another one like that is you're trying to take a picture of a friend or family member or a group and a that person or that group is the subject. It's not the trees around them. It, it is the group that you're really photographing. It's the group that is your subject. And that's kind of an easy one. It gets a little tougher though when you're taking pictures that don't have people in them or that are something just catches your eye when you see a scene, when you're on a trip or just walking around your own hometown. And so speaking of going on trips, oftentimes people try, and I know I was one of these people, try to wait until there aren't any people because you want to take that picture of that church or uh, a statue or something and you don't want the people in it, the tourists like yourself. But actually, the people, especially if you can get people who seem to be local people or native to the country you're in or whatever, and there's something about them that makes them interesting, if you include them in the shot, it makes the shot perhaps even a little more interesting. Now, again, if you're taking a picture of a statue or a front of a church because you just like the design of it, like in Florence, the Duomo, that's probably what your subject is. And the people that you're going to include in that picture in Florence, you can't really get away from it because there are always people around. The Duomo, the church, is really the subject of your, of your photo. But then sometimes buildings especially are so big, you really can't take pictures of them unless you're really far away. So it, it, it behooves you to make photos that are kind of unique and but show something about that building and so a multiple number of pictures can represent that building and it's details of the building that you're taking shots of. So the, the bottom line of this is before we start walking around and, and we take some pictures we talk about the thought process that goes through uh, taking your making your, your final image is I want you to think about what the subject is in the picture that you're going to take. Yep. Mike Brown's a British photographer that I really uh, respect and a great trainer and has great number of videos on YouTube that really go the gamut of learning how to really control your camera. And one of his biggest things is pre-visualization. -visual and he's done a number of shows recently that have focused on that. And pre-visualization -visual basically is, okay, I'm going out in the square in this little village and I've seen this church and I've seen some uh, some people walking by maybe they're getting ready to set up a market or something and that catches your eye and so you pre-visualize that what you want is a picture of that court that that uh, plaza but you want some of the merchants in the picture so you've pre-visualized what you want your final image to look like and you may even think in terms of black and white or plain plain color but vivid color of the vegetables or something that's in the market in that plaza in front of the church. So you're thinking about all those things. And that's what I want before we even start walking around and figuring out why do we choose f8 over f5.6 or why do we choose a shutter speed of 1 over 60 as opposed to 1 over 2 50th of a second. Those are technical things that are going to vary with the light. Fortunately, the sun is positioned such that it's not going in and out as it often does, causing uh, blotches on my face. I think I'm remaining pretty much the same exposure from the time I started this video. But if that sun was moving like that, as it might be if you're sightseeing, because oftentimes when we're sightseeing, the pictures we're taking are in the middle of the day. If we're not taking pictures, we have to deal with that sun and the changing light. And that, that 
deciding what exposure uh, settings you're going to use is what we'll be doing in future episodes of learning photography in this series of Out With Your Camera. So finally, the takeaway is know what the subject is in your picture. Don't just shoot a picture. Now I do that. I, I mean, we all will do that. But when you really are out and wanting to capture some unique pictures, you want to think about what it is that you're taking a photo of. So I've got a birdhouse over there. And if I wanted to take that, I, I, we'll, we'll do this. But I'm going to think of a couple of things because I want that. First of all, I'd love to have a bird with its head out, but that's probably not going to happen. So I've got a few blossoms left on the crepe myrtle. And I might want them in the, in the picture as well. But the subject is that birdhouse. And so I'm going to do my best to put the background out of focus. And I'm going to make sure that the birdhouse is what is really in crisp focus. And that your attention will be drawn to the birdhouse. Maybe I'd put a red ribbon around it, the, the, the thing that's holding it on the tree, in the tree. And that would bring your attention to that. Okay, but we got bugs, so it's time to stop. Final word is, as always, stay in control of your camera. Thank you very much for checking in, and I'll see you in the next episode of Learning Photography. Goodbye.